mixing of two gases. Consider a container divided into two equal parts by a partition. One of these parts contains one mole of helium gas and the other one, one mole of argon gas. Energy in the form of heat can pass through the partition from one gas to the other. After a sufficiently long time, the two gases will therefore come to equilibrium with each other. The average pressure of the helium gas is then P1 bar and that of the argon gas is P2 bar. So helium is P1 bar, argon is P2 bar. Compare the pressures, the P1 bar and P2 bar of the two gases. What happens when the partition is removed? Describe the process as it would appear on a movie played backward. Is it reversible or irreversible? What is the average pressure exerted by the gas in the final equilibrium situation? Okay, so um, we have a container that is isolated. It's filled with helium and argon gas. There is a partition in between. Uh, so we have equal volumes on two sides, V and V, and we have one mole of helium gas and one mole of argon gas, and we call the pressure uh, average pressure of the helium gas P1 bar, average pressure of the argon gas P2 bar when the system reaches equilibrium. And then the partition is removed so that the total volume will become 2V. So let's see what we can say about the uh, pressures of these uh, two gases. So because I have a helium gas and that is one mole, the uh, number density, so the number of helium gas molecules per volume, would be Avogadro's number divided by the volume V. And because I also have argon gas, which is also one mole, the number density for argon gas atoms will be Avogadro's number divided by the volume V because it also has the same volume V. And I have a total volume 2V. Now, uh, when we form a thermal contact between these two, heat can flow through the partition. And until we reach the equilibrium, what will happen? Well, heat will flow through the partition until we have the mean energy per atom on helium side will be equal to the mean energy per atom on the argon side. So remember, if we have um, atoms with different masses, this would still be the same as we have shown explicitly in problem 1.9. Okay, so we can write the average energy per atom uh, on both sides will be the same at equilibrium. This is problem 1.9 result. Okay, so uh, then I can comment on the pressures then uh, from elementary kinetic theory we found the following result for uh, the mean pressure exerted by a gas. Uh, P1 bar will be equal to two-thirds um, number of helium atoms per volume, number density, times the kinetic energy of helium atoms, uh, mean value. And similarly, for P2 bar, we have two-thirds 
number of argon atoms per volume, kinetic energy of argon atoms per volume. Now here I note that argon gas and helium gas are monatomic. As we will see later on, this implies that the energy uh, only consists of kinetic energy uh, due to translations of the center of mass. So, uh, because we have uh, the, the number of helium atoms per volume is equal to number of argon atoms per volume, which is Avogadro's number divided by V, and we have the mean energy per atom the same on both sides, uh, we can conclude that P1 bar must be equal to P2 bar. So they will have the same mean pressure at equilibrium. Now part B. Part B says the partition ha is removed. What happens when the partition is removed? Describe the process as it would appear on a movie played backward. Is it reversible or irreversible? Well, what will happen? We will see a helium and argon atoms mixing until they form a uniform distribution uh, throughout the full space 2V. Uh, so there will be random collis collisions between these molecules. And in the backward movie, you would see the uh, molecules re-separate uh, so that we have helium on one side and argon on the other side. And this is going to be an irreversible process because that requires the atoms to move in a very special pattern in order to form uh, the initial configuration. So let's write these comments. Uh, when the partition is removed, Uh, the two gases will gradually mix. Due to random collusions between atoms until a uniform distribution of the two types of gas atoms is obtained. So we have the most random, most uniform distribution obtained at equilibrium. Now if you if I play this movie backward in the backward movie the gas mixture would separate to form a helium only and an argon only half of the container. So we're going back to the initial situation. Uh, what is wrong with this scenario? This scenario would require the gas atoms to move in a very specific 
pattern. Which is to go from this order, the uniform configuration and two orders separate gases this is very So um, this scenario and is unlikely. So what is the uh, conclusion then? Therefore, we can conclude that the process is irreversible. So this is our answer to part B. What is the average pressure exerted by the gas in the final equilibrium situation? So let's look at the final equilibrium uh, situation. In the final configuration, we can write the number density Uh, now, N prime helium will be Avogadro's number divided by 2V, which will also be N prime argon. So they will have the same partial pressures, but this is basically the initial uh, number density divided by 2. Uh, and since at equilibrium, we also have um, the mean energy per atom epsilon helium bar will be equal to epsilon argon bar which I can call epsilon bar I will see that in the final configuration P1 prime bar will be two-thirds n helium prime epsilon bar which is two-thirds um, epsilon bar times uh, and helium over 2 epsilon bar which is basically P1 bar divided by 2 and the same thing is true for uh, the argon pressure P2 prime bar will be 2 thirds and argon prime epsilon bar which is two-thirds uh, multiplied by um, num initial number density divided by two epsilon bar which is P2 bar over two. So the total pressure we can write P bar will be the partial pressure of helium plus the partial pressure of argon which is P1 bar um, P1 bar plus P2 bar divided by 2 which is uh, we, since we have found that P1 bar and P2 bar were the same at equilibrium in part A which will be equal to P1 bar. Okay, so the end result is that the total pressure will be equal to the initial pressure of the partial pressures of the two gases. Uh, on the other hand, the partial pressures P1 
and P2 will drop in half as compared to their initial values. Okay, so this is our answer. So let's uh, recap what we said. We have an isolated container that is divided into two equal parts by a partition. One of the parts contains one mole of helium gas uh, for volume V and the other part contains one mole of argon gas in volume V because they're equal parts. Energy in the form of heat can pass through the partition from one gas to the other. So after a sufficiently long time we reach equilibrium. The two gases will therefore come to equilibrium with each other. The average pressures of the helium gas is then P1 bar and that of argon gas is P2 bar. So we, our task is to compare the two pressures. What happens, explain what happens when the partition is removed. Is the process reversible or irreversible? Describe what would happen if we play the movie backward. And finally, what is the average pressure exerted by this gas mixture in the final equilibrium situation? Because I have one mole of helium and one mole of argon, that means I have Avogadro's number of these molecules divided by V. The number density is the same on two sides. And heat will flow until we have the same mean energy per atom. And this is what we found out in problem 1.9. Therefore, we see that the P1 bar, which is two-thirds number density times average kinetic energy of helium atoms, which is the average energy per atom in helium, will be the same uh, as that of argon because we have the same number density and same uh, mean energy per atom. So, and I also note that argon and helium are monatomic uh, gases, so the average kinetic energy per atom is the same thing as average energy per atom. We will come back to this later on. When the partition is removed, the two gases will gradually mix due to random collisions between atoms until we form the most disordered, most random, most uniform distribution of the two types of gas atoms. And if you play the movie backward, the gas mixture would re-separate and you would have helium on the left hand side, argon on the right hand side. This requires the atoms to move in a very specific pattern and it requires going from a disorder to an order situation. Therefore, it's unlikely and it's irreversible process. In the final configuration, the number density drops in half because I have the same number of moles but twice the volume for the two gases and I have the same mean energy per atom at equilibrium. So the, the partial pressures drop in half but the total pressure is basically equal to the initial pressure.